In present day Christianity, Pastor Elton would have been described as a failure. Have you, have you ever, you know that Pastor Elton is the father of what you call the revival in Nigeria? Huh? Hmm? Have you ever studied his life? Pa Elton? Have you ever? Have you just sat down to study his life? I remember years ago, I was still in a denomination. I was waiting upon the Lord. Then I had a vision. I never forget it. It's one of the strongest I've had of the place where God dwells. I had a vision. The way that vision began was I saw a truck. Everyone who came out of Egypt came out with their bags full. They didn't spend it in the wilderness. God provided clothing. God provided food. God provided shelter. God provided security. They carried money. So what did they do with the money? When you read further, you will now find out that God told them that this money that you took from Egypt, use it to build my temple. He told them to carry gold and silver, not because of their basic needs for the building of the temple. Your basic needs are too little for God to fix. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> room the laws of God are the guiding principles in that courtroom Satan can look at somebody and say he spilled but it's because of him that girl committed three abortions because you think that because you are not the one who carried the baby you don't have guilt you are the one that told her that you will not receive the child that she should go and remove it in fact if, if you thank God that I'm not God because to say I may be God now you are go punish past you because when things like that happen, it's normally the female gender that suffers the most. I went to see one young lady in an abortion clinic. The pain that she was in has never left my memory. She was rolling, rolling. I didn't know when I lost it and I challenged her mother. I said, are you cousin? Because they had sat under me for a while. I knew the mother's contribution to the daughter's failures. When the girl was coming to church, when she leaves church, they will beat her like a thief. Beat her. In fact, the marks are on her body till today. They beat her like a thief. In two days, stay church. Is still, then the, the, she now started following Yahoo boys. The mother now brought her into the kitchen to teach her how to make banga soup for the Yahoo boy. So when I saw the girl in pain, I lost it. And I told her, you are, you are a bad mother. Bad mother. That's how certain babies that have been buried, programs from divinity, are pointing at people and saying, by a bad channel. By a bad channel. God wanted to establish destiny in the earth and he chose your womb. And you partnered with Satan to uproot a divine program. And bury it. Satan will hold that tender against that individual. And if that individual does not come to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. That accusation will keep riding on that person's head until mercy speaks. So when you come into the environment of Christ, the journey of destiny has already been activated. But how far you will travel in your prophetic destiny is heavily dependent on your partnership. So Paul now tells Timothy, yes, there's prophecy over your head, but you see, by that prophecy, because you know that there is prophecy, what are you going to do? You use the prophecy to do what? Wage a good warfare. Towards the end, I'm going to tell you what the prophecy does. I'll show you five things that it does. Hmm? It says by that prophecy, you will wage a good warfare. So once you are able to see what destiny has provided for you, then you know the posture to sustain in your fight. When you find a Christian that is careless, lives anyhow, eats anyhow, they don't know the prophecy of their life. You cannot have glimpsed at destiny and be casual. It's impossible. You cannot have glimpsed at what God wants to do with your life and not take on the posture of a fighter, a soldier. It's not possible. Show me a Christian that is telling you things that I don't know why I can't stop immorality. He's in love with sexual sin. 
And the reason he loves sexual sin is that he does not know what God wants to do with his life. If he knows, he will be careful what he does with his vessel. The reason he's careless, any boy that just comes into your space, they say, I love you, I love you too. See your nose, my nose. Oh. Then he says, send me your nudes. And you say, my nudes. I don't send nudes. So I'm a child of God. Come on, send me your nudes now. You know I love you. Oh. The reason you have time to be sharing nudes as if you are buying tomatoes in the market is that you are a waster. You don't know what, what God wants to do with your life. You, you are just in destiny to enter buses that you don't know where they are going. Anything popular becomes attractive to you because you don't know your destination. You don't know your prophecy. He said, by them you might wage a good warfare. By them you might wage a good warfare. And last time out, I was showing you where that warfare will happen. I told you that that warfare the arena for that warfare is in threefold. Is the warfare of poverty, is the warfare of pleasure, is the warfare of pain. It's threefold. Satan will weaponize your lack against you. He will weaponize lack against you. He will make you feel that God cannot meet your needs. And that area of your life will become an intense battle your needs i posted a short video some days ago from our teaching satan substitutes so how many of you remember that when we had conclave in february powerful teaching me myself i go and listen to that teaching from time to time satan substitutes part one i posted posted a short video when i was talking about the fact that if you do not have material blessings and all you have is your basic needs that are met will you consider your life successful and one guy came there and commented and said, as long as my basic needs are met, food, shelter, clothing, yes. So it means that if he doesn't have food, if he doesn't have shelter, if he doesn't have clothing, he will not consider himself successful, even if his spiritual life is working. So that means, dear brother, that somebody like Pa Elton would have been considered a failure. Hmm? In present day Christianity, Pa Elton would have been described as a failure. Have you, have you ever, you know that Pa Elton is the father of what you call the revival in Nigeria? Huh? Hmm? Have you ever studied his life? Pa Elton? Have you ever? Have you just sat down to study his life? I remember years ago, I was still in a denomination. I was waiting upon the Lord, and I had a vision. I never forget it. It's one of the strongest I've had of the place where God dwells. I had a vision. The way that vision began was I saw a truck on the road. And then I saw a white man and a black man. And the white man was pointing to the man like this, that this is where to go. So I walked to where they were. I stood and then he began to give us instructions. I kept looking at the face. Who is this guy? So when I woke up, I was like, what is God trying to say to me? So I went... And I began to scout. Scout, what is God trying to say to me? And God said, I just had an encounter with Pa Elton. I'd never seen him. I'm on the altar, I'm telling you the truth. And then I went online to look for him and the picture I saw was exactly the man that appeared to me in my revelation. So I now went to go and study the things that he said. Do you know that? Many of the things that we are teaching now and trying to restore the body of Christ back, Pa Elton has been teaching it. All the madness you are seeing in Pentecola. Oh my God. Pentecostalism. All the rascalism you are seeing. He saw it since. A prophet from the Lord. Do you know how he came to Elisha? God told him. He never had heard of Elisha before. He now had to go and look for it on the map. And God said, go there and do ministry. He uprooted his wife uprooted his only daughter and came to Nigeria to labor. He died here. He told them not to send his body anywhere. They buried him here. His daughter is 91, never been married, living in a dilapidated mission house, waiting to die. 
all she does there is intercede for the body of Christ that the things that her father saw will one day come to Nigeria if you look at that kind of life you will say it's a failure because she doesn't have many food doesn't have a house of her own doesn't have the nicest of clothes if Satan can succeed to get you to become a slave of the material realm he has crippled you he has finished you the war of poverty is the major war that wants to kill people the major war. my needs my needs if God loves me why is he not supplying my needs my needs Satan can weaponize lack against you so you must know how to rise above your material needs and come to a place in your pilgrimage whereby whether you have or you don't have it does not affect your faithfulness to God it does not affect your faithfulness to God and this is why in the Bible there are many patterns you see bro God doesn't want us to fail oh. he knows Satan God knows how Satan works he knows Paul said put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy Satan is subtle he's willy he's willy he, can, he will look for any way even manifest himself as an angel of light if he knows he can destroy you by that if he knows that he can give you a breakthrough and that breakthrough will kill you he will do everything to make sure you receive a breakthrough Satan so when you read through the scriptures you'll be seeing God communicating to us in signs in metaphors and sometimes very clearly so that even the weakest amongst us will not say I did not understand Israel leaves Egypt in Exodus chapter 12 the Bible now says that according to the instruction that Moses gave to them they went to the Egyptians Ben and they asked for gold they asked for silver they asked for clothing have you seen that scripture before? Help us, media. Exodus 12. What verse is that now? I can't remember the verse, but I know it's in Exodus 12. Media, find it. Find it, find it, find it. Exodus 12. It should be 30, 31, 32. I know it's towards the end. Find it, find it, find it, find it. I've not entered into the meat of my teaching yet. Find it. 35. Good. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses and they had asked from the Egyptians. What did they ask from them? Next. And what? And clothing. Next verse, 36. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested. Thus, they did what? They plundered the Egyptians. That word that is translated plundered means to strip naked other translations say spoiled it means to strip what did they go with silver gold and what clothing where did they use it huh? where did they use it the lord Eh? told them take the silver take the gold take the clothing leave it in your bank account I will meet your need their shoes were growing as they were going they took clothing they could not use it to sew a shwebi hmm? the clothes they were wearing were growing so those that were young when they left Egypt as they were growing older, the mothers might have one day woken up and said, ah, this boy is going to be 10 years old. He doesn't have dress. As he's growing, the dress, the baby, you don't understand. The baby clothes were growing to meet the baby's age. Everyone who came out of Egypt came out with their bags full. They didn't spend it in the wilderness. God provided clothing. God provided food. God provided shelter. God provided security. 
they carried money. So what did they do with the money? When you read further, you will now find out that God told them that this money that you took from Egypt, use it to build my temple. He told them to carry gold and silver, not because of their basic needs for the building of the temple. Your basic needs are too little for God to fix. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Welcome back from that video. I know you are blessed in that video. This is Kingdom Audio TV channel. Please do have to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification button so you'll be notified whenever we have a video like this. Don't forget to drop your comment, drop your point of view. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen.